I came to Benares first time when I was uh, four years old with my father and my mother. My father is a sitar player and he started uh, learning sitar here in Benares through Ram Chakravarti. This uh, was my background my whole life. Like the music of sitar was playing in the other room when I was growing up. And when I was nine, I had my first Katak uh, lesson. My mom brought me. I remember it was a temple and there was a girl teaching kids. In 2006, seven, I had like an important break in my life. Something was not working for me where I was staying. I was living in Barcelona, working like in a corporate work and all. And while my mother was in India and I was still in Barcelona, she, I remember that call. And she said, Mafalda, I think you have to come back. And then uh, I, I started doing some kata classes in Barcelona. So I thought that uh, could make sense, you know, to come to the route again and, uh, and learn kata in Benares. So in December 2007, I came back to Benares. So somehow this, uh, this whole city has a very strong meaning for my dance. It's like a, a journey that goes in a circle. I started and now I'm back here, which is interesting. Moms are something very special, I think. We have hard times when we are young, but then you realize how, how strong is that uh, bound together. Katak is a North Indian classical form of dance. Comes from the root kata, which in Sanskrit means story. And the katakas were the storytellers. They are like nomads. They travel around the different uh, towns and they bring stories. We call it in my culture juglars. Juglaris, which they will go around the around the towns, the cities, in the main uh, squares or in the temples where the people will gather and listen to these stories, like mythological stories about the Ramayana or the Mahabharata. So the Katakas had this uh, educational purpose and also um, entertainment purpose. So they will dance. They will uh, sing and they will play music. Mainly three garanas in Katak. Uh, Jaipur garana, Lakhno garana and Benares garana. And then Lakhno is the one I study more. In fact, in my journey, most of my time I spend it uh, with Lakhno garana. Uh, uh, what uh, we could say is like it's, uh, it works more the body, like all the ang, the part of the body, how we move our hands, how we express, and then the bhav, which is the, the approach to the emotion. And uh, yeah, I will say that. And in Benares Garana, uh, the footwork is very important. And also the energy is a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say, uh, maybe more natural, like there is less of aesthetics. They are less concerned of the aesthetic part, which in uh, Lakno Garana we are much more concerned about how I move and how I look and how I put down and then how I move. It's not that in uh, Benais Garana it's not this. It's just uh, the concentration of the energy that we put in the practice is more concentrated in creating patterns without footwork. But of course, one thing that uh, now that I'm living in Benares, uh, the family of uh, Benares Garana and Lakno Garana, they're interlinked. They are cousins, they are brothers. So um, now the young generations are really like uh, trying to make the dance beautiful. So they will learn also in Benares. Uh, they will go to Lakno and learn, uh, for example, with Biju Maharaj which is uh, already passed away, but he was one of the greatest uh, exponents of Black Nogarana. There is a certain uh, interest in uh, aesthetics also in Benares Garana now. Uh, I think dance, uh, as everything in life, is evolving, and uh, we cannot say, no, Lakno is like this, Benares is like this. Of course, there are certain uh, 
characteristics that are important to know. But um, recently we had a workshop with uh, Ragini Maharaj, which is the granddaughter of this supermaster. And when she came to Benares to do the workshop, she said, um, I'm coming here to dance Katak. I am from Lucknow, but Lucknow, Benares, it's all the same. It's just Katak. So I really liked it how she portrayed. So I would say that like there are Garanas, there are gurus that teach in a different ways, uh, paying attention to different aspects of the dance. But uh, nowadays we we it's all a little globalized, so we all want to to learn the beauty of each. And, and the reason I was uh, coming also to Benares, despite of my life, my personal life that brought me here. When I went to Guruji and I saw this footwork and this work that we were talking about before, this practice, like intense practice with the Laya, I really thought that was important for a dancer and specifically for me. Because every dancer we have different natures and uh, maybe I feel very comfortable moving my hands or and I feel less confident with the rhythm. So that's been a very important journey for me. Guruji, he's um, Pandit Ravi Shankar Mishra Ji. He's a um, student of Alan, Alakananda Devi. Alakananda Devi was the sister of Sitara Devi. He, he explained to me that unfortunately she passed away very early. So then in these uh, families, they just learn from each other. They learn from the tabla, they learn from the singer. So he said in his case, he had to, to learn observing a lot observing others, observing, because when your guru passed away and you're very young, then you're left without like your master. So um, he said he learned a lot from her, but then he had to develop himself also. So he created a lot of compositions that now he's teaching us. So this is like what great masters do, no? When there's an understanding so deep of the rhythm and the language, then you can create new things, no? And, uh, that's uh, really unique and interesting. And one thing that I have to say, Guruji is one of the most beautiful souls I met. And um, I feel very privileged to be with him and spending so much time all these uh, past six years, specifically this time of the Corona that we were, I was here in Benares. And uh, we had a lot of time together because there were not so many students. So what I know about his practice is what I live every day in the class. And um, what we do, he has a, a specific methodology of practice. So w I've been dancing also with uh, other gurus. Like my dance has uh, accompanied me during my travels. So wherever I go in the city where I travel, um, I had different masters, uh, different gurus. Um, so what is specific about this uh, class or Guruji is uh, for him the most important is the strong, strong rehearsal. So every time I go to class I do the same exercises. I am born in that house. That you are born in that room. That yeah. room. In the inside home. So you see, I am childhood my. <laughs> yeah. Mata now Prasad I'm... is his uh, brother cousin. So they will fly kites and jump from one roof to the other. And he's like, I don't know how we did this. Yes. Patang. Patang, mm -hmm. yeah. Kites. Big story. Nice. Take it. Please. Eh? at least for 25 to 30 minutes. So there is like a set that he will uh, teach you at the beginning and then you will constantly, repeatedly um, do this, uh, we call it sadhana, like practice, like in yoga we also call it like this. So you start uh, with the hashtag, the movements of the, of the arms and the hands.
And then uh, we move to the foot. And uh, the first exercise that we do is just uh, moving through the different layers that we do in 16 bits. very specific from this garana, the control of rhythm. That was one of the reasons I joined. Uh, after we move to a, a next exercise where we are stressing in different parts of the cycle. So the cycle is uh, four, 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 16 beats, tin tan. So in the first movement we stress in one, and then in the second round we will stress in two three and four and then four, three, two, one. All these kinds of exercises, what um, really shows you is where exactly in this big cycle, this uh, tintal, are you? I think they are very, very, uh, very useful and for me it has uh, been like a great part of my Katak journey. We will have uh, two basic instruments will always accompany us. It will be one, it's the harmonium, or it could be a sarangi, which will um, tell us the liar. And then we will have the tabla. The tabla, what he does is he replicates what we do with the food. So when you see a performance, you really like, it really comes out because it's only not your feet and your gunguru, it's also the tabla. So we and the tabla, we have to be in sync. Before some, eh? Yeah. Theta, ta. Ah, this is no, so, This is actually never mentioned. But I don't know another one. Tick that, 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 What you said before, very popular, I'm yeah. not telling, uh, because very similar. So this mix only for life, very yes. popular. Katak has these um, three very important aspects uh, that it's not only um, exclusive from Katak, from uh, other Indian uh, dan classical dances too. Uh, one part is called Ritya. Ritya means pure dance, means movement. 
means technique, how we move our body and how we, we use our body for the rhythmical part. That's the Nitya. Natya is a drama. Natya means storytelling with emotion, with a purpose of telling something. In between these two, in between Nitya and Natya, there is Ritya. Ritya is a combination of both. It's a combination of movement, but with a purpose, with the purpose of portraying an emotion to it. In the Natya part, we use a technique called Abhinaya. Abhinaya means expression, means using your limbs, your eyes, your body to portray an emotion. One example of uh, this uh, portraying the emotion or telling the story is the Vandana. It's a um, prayer and usually it's associated with one God. The Devi Vandana talks about the main characteristics, the main aspects of Devi. She is the mother that takes care not only of his child but the humanity, the universe. No? But also Devi is powerful. She can destroy all the obstacles, all the ignorance that we have in the world. So many times we portray like with a trident or killing. And then uh, the third aspect of this Devi that we show in the Vandana is the Shanti one, the meditative Devi, the one who can hold the inside and have uh, this moment of uh, reflection. So when we dance uh, the Vandana, we become that Devi. This personification allows us to portray these powers and then give the audience this, uh, this sentiment, this rasa, this um, rasa is the ultimate, it's the flavor, it's uh, what we want to evoke in our audience. Yeah, it's a very good practice and uh, it's a very strong also exercise for the mind. Like to do the same practice every day and try not to get bored of it, you know. Try to, in every practice, learn something more. Namaste. Namaste. So we are just here in front of Jagannath Mandir. Yes. So all these people are pilgrims that come to, to visit Jagannath Mandir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where did you come from? I came from Spain. Spain? I'm a dancer. I'm a dancer. I'm a dancer. I'm a dancer. Do you know where to go? Yes, I'm a dancer. 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 It's very good. Thank you. I know that Hindi is very happy. Okay, I'm going to sing a little bit. Okay, I'm going to sing a little bit. I'm going to sing a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. She was saying, oh, look, he's here. Namaskar. This is Kashi. How is it? Kashi is fine. Kashi is fine? Yes. Heart attack is fine. Okay. You're going to Jagannath Mandi? Yes. Yes, Jagannath Mandir after one year, two years after, like exam, got first class. Yeah, first hmm. class, I see all the uh, yes, new, also yes. the pond. Take it. house, all the house, back side. Acha. Take it, Kashi Ji. Namaste. 
So Gashi does uh, one of the best uh, chais in Nasigat. Huh? Can I? We can give a full experience that it's not physical, it's also completely holistic, you know. Because the purpose of not only dance, uh, all of the all of these uh, practices, music, yoga, they have only one uh, goat, which is uh, moksh, which is the ultimate. So through dance, we also pursue that. That's why I do dance, because it's my own way of uh, searching for the truth. Thank you. Thank you.